Of the darker days, the Sims that dives into the chilling depths of history's most disturbed events and personalities. So today, we continue our coverage of David Koresh, the tragedy at Waco, the Branch Davidians. Now at this time, we had last heard that David Koresh was actually in Waco, Texas, in search of the Prophets. However, before we talk about him arriving in Waco, we need to hit rewind just a little bit and talk about David Koresh, or should I say Vernon Howe's first temptation. After dropping out of high school, Vernon Howe, not yet known as David Koresh, was still hanging out with kids his own age. It wouldn't be long before a younger, more worldly young woman would catch David's eye. One day when he gave her a ride home, she took the opportunity to take his virginity. As fate would have it, she would get pregnant from Vernon's first time with her. Vernon wanted to marry her, but his prize fell on deaf ears and the young woman and her father and the leaders of the church advised young Vernon Howell not to pursue the matter any further. And so, David Koresh, feeling rejected by the leaders of the church, the girl and her father, and knowing that his stepfather had already kicked him out of the house was certainly going to be unhappy with him. And his grandma was going to be sorely disappointed, the one who had been primarily responsible for raising him. Decided that he needed to go and look for the prophets. And there was a lady told him she heard that there was a prophet in Waco, Texas. Now, in order for us to know about David's rise, just as we go back to the David's chapter, we're going to have to study a little bit how the Branch Davidians were formed. French Davidians in 1993 were considered a fringe cult, with David Koresh being labeled a dangerous sociopathic leader. Now it's been said that the difference between a cult and an accepted world religion is time. But she's kind of true when you look back at history. I mean, when Jesus first started his ministry, he and his 12 disciples were basically considered a cult movement. And when Joseph Smith started the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons were considered a French cult movement. Christianity and the Latter-day Saints are considered by many today an accepted Christian institution of religion. And although previously considered separate, the Mormons are considered by many to be a Christian denomination. Now the branch Davidians were loosely tied to a church that David Koresh was active in in his teens. A Seventh-day Adventist, well, most people in 1993 would consider the Seventh-day Adventist church an accepted religion, that had not always been the case. But in time began to accept them and even touted one of its followers as a great Christian teacher, even a prophet. And her name was Ellen G. White. Ellen G. White needed to be the main prophet or earliest pioneering authority of the Seventh day Adventist Church. However, it was William Miller who essentially founded the Seventh day Adventist Church. One of the things that set the Seventh day Adventist Church apart from its Protestant contemporaries was that they believed in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Miller, who was interpreting Revelation, asserted that Jesus would return to earth and claim his church and authority in 1843. Followers of Miller began to predict that the return would happen during the month of October, 1843. And so, when the modified predicted day of October 22, 1844 came, followers of William Miller began to gather together, some of them leaving behind their worldly duties and belongings as they prepared to meet Jesus. But when morning came, all those that were gathered found themselves in a world that remained the same. Jesus had not returned. Ellen White was left devastated. Although Miller did not pick the date, he fell out of favor with many people for not being a true prophet as he was blamed with picking the wrong day. This non-return of Jesus Christ became known by the Millerites and eventually Seventh-day Adventists as the Great Disappointment. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, one of the most prominent leaders to replace Miller as a voice was Ellen G. White. She would present several explanations for the non-return and explain prophetic visions she had which became adopted by followers and are still held in high regard by Seventh-day Adventists today. Now what she was teaching is not going to be the scope of this episode. We just recognize her as a religious leader who had an impact on someone who would be forming a group called the Davidians. Meet Victor Howden. 
He was a rising prominent leader in the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the 1920s. He focused most of his teachings on the book of Isaiah in chapters 54 through 66. These are considered key chapters in the Old Testament which point to predictions being made in the book of Revelation. Victor was not satisfied with just being a prominent teacher and he began to teach people that he, like Ellen G. White before him, was the current prophet and spirit of prophecy, and like Miller did before him, began to speak of Jesus Christ's return to earth. After completing his seminary, Howdeth presented his stance that the Seventh-day Adventists needed to be ready for the return of Jesus and that evidence clearly suggested he was the new spirit of prophecy. This was not well received by the powers that be within the church at the time, and so Victor and some of his followers found themselves being disfellowshipped from the church. In 1935, six years after being kicked out of the Seventh-day Adventist church, Victor Howden and his followers decided to leave the urban area of Los Angeles, California for greener pastures two miles outside of Waco, Texas, and called their settlement Mount Carmel Center. As Havet's influence spread over his followers, they began to believe he was the only authority on the Bible and the only one they could rely upon to lead them to salvation. Howdeth began to teach what he called the Eleventh Hour, meaning that Jesus Christ was going to return to for his bride, being called the Rod, and their teacher Victor Howdeth within a year of 1955. In addition to his Eleventh Hour teaching, Howdeth claimed that he would not die a mortal death because he would be alive when the Eleventh Hour passed. And like Miller before him, he was wrong about the date of the return of Jesus Christ and ironically enough, about his immortality. He died on February 5th, 1955. After his passing, leadership of the Davidians passed on to his wife Florence Howden. Under her rule, the group would sell the original land and settle further outside Waco, Texas. Florence would also predict her own date for the return of Jesus. And just like before, all the Davidians gathered to meet up with their Savior. And just like before, Jesus Christ was a no-show for the Davidians' predicted trip home, like Ellen G. White before him. A man came forward with plausible explanations as to why the eleventh hour did not happen. His name was Ben Roden. He also presented the argument that Florence could not be the current holder of the spirit of prophecy since she had been wrong about the date. The remaining followers of the Davidians agreed and started looking at Ben Roden as the new prophet. Ben Roden would waste no time in planning out who would replace him in the event of his death. First in line would be his wife Lois Roden, then his son George Roden. It would appear that the religious group now taking upon the name the Branch Davidians would be essentially under the leadership of a Roden family member for years to come. When Ben Roden died, the peaceful transfer of leadership to Lois Roden was successful and a challenge. Lois Roden was the individual holding the office of prophet when Vernon Howe, not yet known as David Porsche, arrives in Waco in search of the truth. And has been predicted the peaceful transfer of power to Lois took place upon his passing. However, when it's time for the transfer of power to go from Lois to the next leader, which was eventually established by then to go to his son George, still quite go as planned. But in how, aka David Koretch, plays a significant role in that. As a matter of fact, it's Lois who is in power as the prophet when David Koresh shows up on the scene. We're going to talk about that in the next video. Thanks so much for joining us today, guys. I really hope you like what you're seeing so far. Please consider subscribing so you get all our updates or follow. With some like or comment, let us know how you feel about the content. Until next time, guys, this is your host, Don Duncan, remind you that once you enter the dark, you may never be the same.